This is the AQA Physics 3 complete revision notes. Feel free to pause the video and make notes. I would advise that you download this video as an MP3 file and listen to it whenever you can. Make sure you understand what is being said. This is the most important thing. X-rays are part of the electromagnetic spectrum with short wavelengths. X-rays can cause ionization. X-rays can pass through materials such as flesh, but are absorbed by metal and bone. X-rays affect photographic film as light does. X-ray images can show features inside objects. They can be made using photographic film or CCDs and computers. A CT scan involves taking X-rays from many angles and combining the information inside a computer to, provide, to produce a 3D image. Ultrasound waves are sound waves that are above 20,000 Hz, which is the upper limit of human hearing. Ultrasound waves can be produced by electronic systems. Ultrasound waves are partially reflected when they meet an interface between two different materials. The time taken for an echo to return to a detector can be used to determine the distance to the interface. Ultrasound can be used for imaging the human body, mapping the seabed, and detecting defects inside metal objects. Ultrasound is used in prenatal scanning. Higher intensity ultrasound can be used in treatments such as breaking up kidney stones. X-rays are used to diagnose some conditions in medicine, including bone fractures and dental problems. X-rays can be used to treat some diseases, such as cancer, by killing cancerous cells. X-rays are only used if there are no other ways of diagnosing a problem. The minimum energy needed to produce an image is used to minimize the dose that patients are exposed to. Radiographers and other health workers could be exposed to X-rays when the machines are in use so they usually leave the room while the machine is working. Ultrasound scans are safer than X-rays because ultrasound rays are non-ionizing. X-rays show features that cannot be seen in ultrasound scans. CT scans produce better quality images than X-rays, but the patient is exposed to a lot more X-ray radiation. Light changes direction when it passes at an angle other than 90 degrees from one transparent medium to another. This is called refraction. The amount of bending depends on the refractive index of the medium. Refractive index equals sin i over sin r. i equals angle of incidence, r equals angle of refraction. Convex lenses are thicker in the middle than at the edges. Convex lenses make rays of light converge to a point. The point to which parallel rays of light converge is the principal focus of the lens. The distance from the center line of the lens to the principal focus is the focal length of the lens. A lens can form an image of an object. The image can be magnified or diminished, upright or inverted, and real or virtual. A real image is formed when rays of light converge to a point. A virtual image is formed when rays of light appear to come from a point. The nature of an image can be worked out using a ray diagram. A ray parallel to the axis of a converging lens bend so that it passes through the principal focus of the lens. A ray passing through the principal focus of a converging lens emerges parallel to the axis. A ray through the center of a converging lens passes straight through without bending. A converging lens acts as a magnifying glass when the object is closer than the focal length of the lens. 
The nature of an image formed by a lens depends on the position of the object relative to the focal point. For converging lenses with the object beyond the focal point, the image is real, inverted and on the opposite side of the lens to the object. The image is diminished if the object is beyond two focal lengths and magnified if the object is between one focal length and two focal lengths. A converging lens acts as a magnifying glass if the object is closer than one focal length. The image is magnified virtual upright and on the same side of the lens as the object. Diverging lenses are thinner in the middle than around edges. They are also called concave lenses. A diverging lens makes parallel rays spread out as if they have come from the principal focus. A ray diagram for a diverging lens has one ray that passes straight through the center of the lens and one parallel to the lens that is bent so that it appears to come from the principal focus. Diverging lenses always produce images that are virtual, upright, diminished and closer to the lens than the object. The iris is the colored part of the eye and the pupil is the hole in the middle that appears black. The iris changes the size of the pupil in response to different lighting conditions. The cornea is a clear covering over the iris and pupil that helps to focus light on the retina. The shape of the lens is controlled by ciliary muscles which are connected to it by suspensory ligaments. The retina detects light and sends electrical signals to the brain. The shape of the lens can be changed to focus on close and distant objects. It needs to be thicker to focus on close objects. The range of vision for people with good eyesight is about 25 centimeters to infinity. These points are known as the near point and far point. Eyes are similar to cameras in that they both have lenses to focus light, an aperture slash pupil to control the amount of light entering, and a light-sensitive medium to detect the light. People with short sight cannot focus on distant objects. Light rays are brought to a focus in front of the retina because the eyeball is too long or the lens is too thick. Short sight can be corrected using diverging lenses in spectacles or contact lenses. People with long sight cannot focus on close objects. Light rays are brought to a focus behind the retina because the eyeball is too short or the lens cannot be made thick enough. Long sight can be corrected with converging lenses in spectacles or contact lenses. The power of a lens is measured in diodes. Lens power equals 1 over the focal length. The focal length of a lens depends on how curved its surfaces are and the refractive index of the material from which it is made. Materials with a high refractive index allows lenses to be thinner for the same power. Light can be reflected as it leaves a medium such as glass. If the angle of incidence at the glass to air interface is bigger than the critical angle, total internal reflection will occur. Refractive index equals 1 over sine C. Optical fibers are made of two layers of glass, with the outer layer having a lower refractive index. Light is totally internally reflected inside optical fibers. Uses of optical fibers include endoscopes, which can be used by doctors to look inside patients, Lasers are narrow beams of light that can, that can be used in CD and DVD plays for eye surgery and for cutting, burning and cauterizing. The turning effect of a force is called a moment. M equals F times D. Moment equals force times perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot. If an object is not turning, the clockwise and anticlockwise moments on it must be equal. 
Cranes use counterweights to balance their loads, to reduce the forces on the tower, and to stop them toppling over. Levers can be used as force multipliers. The force applied is magnified if the effort distance is greater than the load distance. Machines such as wheelbarrows, bottle openers and claw hammers are all exa examples of simple levers. The force exerted by a lever can be calculated using the moment equation. Objects behave as if all their mass is concentrated at the center of mass. The center of mass, the center of, mass of a symmetrical object is on its axis of symmetry. A suspended object will come to rest with its center of mass directly below the point of suspension. The center of mass of a thin sheet of irregularly shaped material can be found by suspending it from different points and, mark and marking vertical lines on it. A stable object does not topple over easily. An object topples when its center of mass is above a point outside its base. Stability can be improved by lowering the center of mass and widening the base. Liquids are almost incompressible. Pressure in a liquid is transmitted equally in all directions. Pressure equals force divided by area. Liquids are used in hydraulic systems to transmit forces. A hydraulic system can be used to multiply forces if the piston at the load end has a greater area than the piston at the effort end. Hydraulics are used in car braking systems. A pendulum consists of a bob on a string. The period of a pendulum is the time for one complete string. Time period equals 1 over frequency. The period of a pendulum depends only on its length. The longer the pendulum, the longer the period. An object moving in a circular path is accelerating towards the center of the circle. The resultant force acting towards the center of the circle is called the centripetal force. The centripetal force needed increases if the mass or speed of the object increases, or if the radius of the circle decreases. An electromagnet is formed when a current flows through a coil of wire. Most electromagnets have an iron core. Electromagnets can be used to move heavy magnetic materials such as iron and scrapyards. Loudspeakers produce vibrations in a cone using a combination of a permanent magnet and an electromagnet. Relays use electromagnets to allow one circuit to control another. Circuit breakers cut off the current in a circuit if it is too high. There is a magnetic field around a wire carrying a current. If a wire carrying a current is placed in a magnetic field, there will be a force on the wire. This is the motor effect. The directions of the current, magnetic field and the force can be worked out using Fleming's left hand rule. The size of the force can be increased by increasing the current or the strength of the magnetic field. The direction of the current can be changed by changing the direction of the current or the magnetic field. Electric motors have a coil of wire in a magnetic field. The coil rotates when current flows through it. A changing magnetic field induces a potential difference in the coil of wire in the field. Transformers can change the potential difference of an alternating current. A transformer consists of a primary coil, a secondary coil, and an iron core. A step-up transformer increases the potential difference. A step-down transformer decreases it. The change in potential difference depends on the ratio of the number of turns in the primary and the secondary coils. The potential differences across the primary and secondary coils of a transformer are related by the equation for a 100% efficient transformer PD across primary coil 
times count through primary coil equals PD across secondary coil times count through secondary coil. No transformers are 100% efficient as some energy is transferred as heat in the coils and core. Switch mode transformers contain components that switch the supply on and off very rapidly, increasing the frequency. A step up transformer increases the potential difference, a step down transformer decreases it. The high frequency means that a much smaller and lighter transformer can then be used to change the voltage. Switch mode transformers waste far less energy as heat than traditional transformers do when they are switched on but with no load. And that's about it. P1 was done, P2 was done, and P3 was done. I hope all these videos help and good luck with all your exams.